third area of focus for women is the topic of whether to use chest voice, whether to use head voice, or whether to mix the chest voice and the head voice in the style. Now, your chest voice, is, for women, it's basically your speaking voice, unless uh, uh, you're Julia Child or someone who's strange who speaks way up here, but your, your chest voice is basically your speaking voice. And that sounds like this. Lee will demonstrate that for you now. Na, na, na. Now, your head voice sounds like this. Now, a word that you're going to hear tossed around in musical theater and a lot in pop singing is the word belting. And for women, what belting means is that means taking your chest voice higher than is comfortable. And it's a really loud sound, dramatic. It's a very contemporary sound. And that sounds like this. No, no. Now it's very important that you're careful when you're belting because belting does put a lot of strain on the muscles in your larynx and your tongue in this area. Now when you do belt, you want to try to keep yourself as free from tension as you can. That's very important. But the reality is uh, belting's not wrong. It just will tire your voice out faster and it can be dangerous if you're not very free from tension. So be very careful with belting. So styles that use a lot of chest voice would be styles like uh, contemporary musical theater, for instance, like the musical Chicago. Come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? That musical uses a ton of chest voice and a lot of what we would call belting. Liza Minnelli was a famous belter. Oh, now I believe in the king, like my time on earth is cooking. Whether polka dotted stripes or even chest. Also, pop styles, you watch American Idol, when you hear somebody do that big money high note, uh, female voice, and it sounds really dramatic, they're usually belting. Now, fake belting is a topic, a uh, very important type topic, and in your vocal studies, it's something that you really should study. Fake belting is going up, starting your chest voice and going up into your head voice, but keeping it so forward that it's hard for the listener to tell whether you're belting or not, and it sounds really dramatic. Fake belting sounds like this. Nah, nah, nah. Now, one of the most important things that you can learn as a female singer is how to mix. Now, what mixing is, is mixing is learning how to effectively transition from your chest voice into your head voice smoothly. And listen to Lee demonstrate a nice slide from her chest voice up into her head voice and back now. Now, when you first start off working on mixing, you're going to find it's really hard to smoothly transition from your chest voice to head voice. So at least, it's, that's the most common thing. Some people mix without even realizing they're doing it. Uh, but that area between your chest voice and your head voice, right when you feel it switch, you might feel a little flip in your throat, that's called your break. Uh, a style of singing that's really based on using a lot of your break would be yodeling. Listen to Lee demonstrate what a, her break sounds like. Yeah, yeah. So mixing is a lot like uh, switching gears with your car. Um, first gear is like your chest voice and second gear is like your head voice. Now. Learning how to transition smoothly takes a lot of coordination and a lot of daily practice. Uh, there, and, and by the way, something very important about learning chest voice and head voice and mixing is there's this middle area in your range for women where you can choose whether to be in your chest voice, a mix of your chest voice and head voice, or purely in your head voice. And uh, in that area, you've got a lot of coordination and a lot of control of what your voice is doing. Lee will demonstrate the coordination of this middle area where you learn how to shift between your chest voice and head voice right now in this exercise, ni a a e. So 
one way that you can think about mixing uh, for female voice is like two faders on a soundboard. Think about this one as your chest voice and this one as your head voice. When your chest voice is up, your head voice is down. And you can control right in the very same range of your voice. Uh, you can control your chest voice and head voice in your mixing. It's not that you're always either chest voice or head voice. There is this gray area in between uh, where you are able to do a little bit of chest, a little bit of head. Notice this is like half chest, half head. This is pure head. This is pure chest voice. You have control of these things. So to wrap up this third area of focus for the female singers, whether to use a lot of chest voice, whether to use mixing of chest voice and head voice, or whether to use mostly head voice, uh, you really need to pay attention to these styles. For lots of chest voice, we have contemporary musical theater, some contemporary musical theater. Uh, like there are certain aspects of the musical Wicked where the song requires a lot of belting. Musicals like Chicago require a lot of belting. Cabaret has a lot of belting in it. Uh, styles that involve a lot of mixing, th this is the biggest area to focus on. Uh, in mixing, we notice in pop singing there is a lot of belting, uh, depending on the song. In more of the ballads, though, you will hear some head voice on the high notes while there's a lot of chest voice in the bottom notes. Uh, mixing is hugely important, and don't forget fake belting. That's using your head voice and placing it really forward to give you some of that effect of uh, a belt sound. Now, uh, and in the styles that we use for that mixing, we have jazz. Jazz is almost all mixing. It's wonderful mixing. We do hear in contemporary musical theater mixing. Some songs are belting, some are mixing. And again, like I said, we have pop, we have a lot of mixing. Now, classical music, we almost always stay in our head voice. <laughs> to women singing opera, sometimes when they're doing runs and passages for dramatic effect they'll go down into their chest voice and there are certain classical singers that have a reputation for using more chest voice than others. But you'll find in school if you're studying classical voice that the teachers will try to keep the female voice in their head voice as long as possible. Uh, there is chest voice use in, use in classical music but it's used very sparingly. Uh, now classical musical theater for the women, remember the, he the, the classical, uh, the romantic leads like Laurie in Oklahoma, Sarah in Guys and Dolls, uh, those roles are going to use more head voice while the supporting c character roles will use more chest voice and, uh, and, and even more mixing in those styles. But even the romantic leads in classical musical theater, they will use a little bit more chest voice commonly than you'll hear in opera. So, in a nutshell, I know that's a ton of information, but when you're listening to singers, remember, do your research of the performance practice. If you're singing the role of Lori in Oklahoma, you listen to 50 different performances you can find of Lori, and then you'll make a decision. But ultimately, don't forget, the, the final decision on your vocal production in a show usually your music director or your director. So uh, really listen to your uh, teachers and listen to your directors when you're performing.